Hi, Gina. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Um, so for me, um, I'm no longer working. Um, I was made redundant about six weeks ago. And I mm -hmm. have to say, I'm absolutely loving my life of not working. Um, spending time with my husband, with the dog, gardening, doing all the things that I haven't done for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I know where I want to go and I know what I want to do, which is to become a three principal practitioner, write mm -hmm. a book. But I've got this stuff going on in my head. Well, how can you be a three principal practitioner? You don't know enough. And what if you write a book and nobody likes it? So there's this negative stuff going on in the background. Mm. And I kind of, I have good days and bad days where life's wonderful and, and then other days where I've just got negative talk going on. And, uh, gee, that sounds like me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're in good company, Gina. Um, but, and, and I'll sound like an idiot asking you this, but why would it matter uh, that you've sometimes have negative talk going on? Well, I don't suppose it does really, but I guess it just makes me um, think I can't do this. Uh, the this being become a three a practice, principles practitioner yes. and write a book. Yeah. I need to go back and do nursing because that will give me a steady income. Go back to what I know. That's the easy way. Well, it may well be the easy way in some ways. Like it may well be that. And I guess, I guess the thing I'm wondering, like if you were to do the thing that you're wanting to do, How would you know it had worked? Um, if I was getting good results with clients and getting a reasonable income mm -hmm. and a book that was popular. Oh, right. So for, for this to be a good move, the book has to be popular. Oh yeah. How, how many, how will you know it's popular? If it was bought, if people were reading it and saying it was good and funny and entertaining and useful. Got it. So what would be, what would be, oh, can I ask a quick favor? Kim, can you mute yourself as well? Purely because every time uh, there's any background noise, I lose the picture of uh, Gina because it swaps. Thanks. Um, so Gina, what would, what would you like, uh, like if I could, you know, the cheesy coaching question 101, if I could wave a magic wand and you could have it however you want it to be, what would you like to have happen in this session? Get my head going in the right direction. And what direction's that? Um, oh gosh. Moving in the right direction, getting something done so that I'm working towards what I want to achieve. Okay, so, I'm, and I promise I'm not going to keep being idiotic, but so what, if, you're, if, you're, if your head had nothing to do with it if, it, what, if none of this was dependent on what your head was doing, what would you do next? Uh, get more on paper. Look at how to self-publish, which I've started to do, mm -hmm. and explore what I needed to do in order to become a uh, three principal practitioner, which I think I've started, but I don't think I've done enough. Okay. So what does getting more on paper mean? Uh, just writing more. Okay. So... Here's the interesting thing to me, Gina. 
it sounds like the things that you need to do are things that you're already doing. Yeah, I think I'm a bit impatient. Oh, okay. Well, I understand that. So, so I'm going to ask you again, that if I could wave that magic wand and you come out of this session with everything the way you want it to be, how would you know it had worked? How would I know? How would you know it had worked? The magic wand had worked. I would be doing more. I would be writing something on a regular basis. I would be uh, reading more about the three principles. I suppose I'm at the moment I'm a bit in limbo because I've allowed myself to enjoy time off mm. that I haven't had for such a long time. Yeah. I like the sound of that. But also I'm very much, uh, I should be doing something. Yeah. Well now that's the kind of thing I'm picking up. Like, you know, that thing of, I should be doing something. Yeah. It sounds to me like that kind of, uh, in instruction, let's call it an instruction. So you've got like a, an instruction in your head, which has been going, oh, I should be doing something. And so kind of what you're saying to me, if I understand correctly, Gina, is like, I've got this thing in my head that's going, I should be doing something, but I'm not doing the things that I think it thinks I should be doing. So can you team up with it to make me do the stuff that it says I should be doing? It, it's kind of like, that's what you're asking me. If I would kind of, if I would get with that voice in your head and gang up on you to make you do the things which you think you should be doing. Is that, is that yeah. about right? Yeah. Well, I'm not that guy. Like you could go and hire an accountability coach who can gang up on you with that voice in your head and get you to do the things that your ego, which knows all about the past, thinks you should be doing. But the challenges, and I say this with a lot of, uh, a lot of compassion, your ego knows nothing about the future. That voice that's talking about what you should do knows nothing about who you really are. Okay. And the fact is that what you said about you're just really enjoying not having that going on, that, that feels like, to me anyway, Every time you talk about that, I'm like, oh, I like that. Like my heart, my heart likes that. Yeah. And my sense is that your heart likes that. Absolutely. So just breathe, will you? <laughs> yes. Breathe. And Gina, I want you to continue breathing for the next few minutes and then for the rest of your life. But see, I can feel you now. And And just pausing to reflect, but my feeling is, my sense is that this time that you're taking for yourself, this will be a funny way of putting it, but that's almost like this is preparing the fertile soil that everything you want to create is going to be grounded in. See.
if you can't allow yourself to enjoy this, how are you going to allow yourself to enjoy something a year down the road? I mean, I could be wrong, but I get the impression that you may have had enough of doing what you should apparently be doing. Totally. Yeah, that's what I thought. So here's what I'm going to do, Gina, if it's okay with you. I want to just talk to the rest of the guys for a minute and just put you on mute and then come back to you in a few minutes. Okay. And, and I'll explain why. So let me, let me just have a chat with them. So, guys, I, at first when I was working with Gina, I was kind of like, so what's going on here? And then I kind of got that... I just kind of picked up on this kind of this deeper feeling of the beauty of the life she's been able to enjoy for the last little while. And then, and then this kind of just sense of something else trying to come in over the top of it and kind of get control and all that sort of stuff. And, and I don't know what the right next steps are for Gina and that sort of thing. I really don't. But I know that it's far more likely to come from that place of something uh, wholesome and true and nourishing and all of that than it is to come from the, all those ideas about what she should be doing. Now, it's useful to be able to plan things and to be able to count on yourself to do what you need to do and that sort of thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But I just, I, I could, as I asked lots of questions to find out what was going, going on, I could feel that there was already a deep kind of wisdom and intelligence at play in Gina's life. And the last thing I want to do is, Start trying to whip that into shape. Like that's the, I remember I watched this documentary about the uh, singer songwriter, Leonard Cohen. And uh, he, uh, he, the documentary was with a whole bunch of uh other artists who had been really inspired and moved by Cohen's work. And so they were being interviewed about the impact he'd had on them and performing some of his songs. And then it was intercut with uh, clips of interview with Leonard Cohen. It was this really fascinating movie. And at one point Cohen, who was, I think had become a Buddhist later in life, he said, uh, life got a lot better when I stopped expecting to win. He said, I stopped working on my masterpiece and I relaxed into the real masterpiece. And the impression I got as I listened to Gina is that she's been relaxing into the real masterpiece. And there's kind of part of her that's been thinking, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I, I'd bet on that. I'd bet on that. And, and especially if Gina's wanting to share, you know, the beauty and the wisdom and the intelligence and the impact of these principles with people, that's where it's going to come from. That's where it's going to come from. It's going to come from that, from her learning to live in that and to enjoy that. Not saying you have to live in it every second, like you'll go on the roller coaster of life, but like that, it seems to me that's where the juice is. Not in, geez, I need to read more three principles books. I mean, I write the damn things, but it's, 
the the only purpose of the books is to point you to the truth that's already there within you all the words only have one job it's to point you back to who you really are and you've already got that So Gina, if it's okay with you, what I'd love to do actually is coach someone else and then circle back to you towards the end of the call. Would that be okay with you? Are you okay to just hang out here and really enjoy, enjoy yourself, enjoying everyone else? Great. Gina, how are you doing? Your Wait. microphone, oh, there we go. I think I've realized it's okay to relax. Mm, and that's chill. a good thing to realize. And not have a list or a prescription of things that you have to do if it's not coming from a good place. Mm. That from the chilled place, the doing will come, but it's the right thing. Mm. So I feel, I feel good. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you.